In this video, I'll talk about the Gaussian graphical model, which is a network model for uh, continuous data where the edges uh, are partial correlation coefficients. So when data are continuous, we can assume that they are normally distributed or actually multivariate normally distributed. And multivariate normally distributed basically means two things. It means that every, uh, uh, every histogram of the data has this bell shape, but it also means that every effect between two uh, variables is linear. And that's, if you look at uh, the scatter plots of any two variables, you have these like ellipse shape, uh, overall kind of shapes. And actually the multivariate normal is uh, a very useful uh, distribution because it's one of the few uh, multivariate distributions that we can actually use to uh, model, uh, jointly model many variables together, which is nice. It's also what's called a maximum entropy distribution for uh, the first and second order moments, which means that it's the least specific distribution you can assign uh, given a certain set of means and a certain set of variances and covariances. So it's actually, it is not a very strict assumption. It's rather a, a rather loose assumption in that, uh, okay, given that we know that there's a mean of, let's say five and a standard deviation of, let's say one, then this bell shape is the least specific distribution we could have designed. That's a, a, a nice little property. Now the multivariate normal distribution has this shape, which I uh, copied from uh, Wikipedia. Also this picture I copied from Wikipedia. And uh, this is the density distribution, which gives us the, basically the height of this curve uh, at any point. And um, the multivariate normal uses two uh, particular parameters. One is this mean factor, which is called mu. And the other one is the variance coverage matrix, which is called sigma. Now sigma is very important because this encodes all variances of the data and also all covariances and relationships between any two variables in the data set. If you know mu and you know sigma, then you know everything in this, uh, in this model because the rest are observed values. Like this y here is observed, this e is a constant, this pi is constant, this k is the number of variables. So you only have this uh, sigma and this uh, mu, or rather you have kappa, the inverse of sigma, which uh, is used in this equation. So you can also say here sigma uh, inverse. Now the inverse, so the inverse of sigma equals kappa. The inverse of a matrix is uh, similar to the inverse of a number. So let's say if we have uh, five, oh, five, then the inverse of that is one over five, such that five inverse times five equals one. Similar in matrices, the inverse of a matrix times, uh, so sigma times sigma inverse equals what we call an identity matrix. So that's a matrix with ones on the diagonal and zeros everywhere else. This kappa is also called a precision matrix sometimes. Now, a quite a magical thing uh, that happens is that this inverse variance coverage matrix, which you know is related to uh, numbers like one over five, so if this is higher, this is lower. This inverse variance coverage matrix actually also encodes association between variables which is a uh, completely bizarre thing if you think about it, but it's actually true and you can prove it. So um, it turns out that if you standardize this kappa matrix in the same way that you would standardize a coverage matrix to a correlation matrix, you get the partial correlation. The partial correlation between two variables given all other variables in the network. So that means that we only need to um, get this kappa to uh, obtain these sparse correlation coefficients that we put in the model, right? So we put these sparse correlations, we then put as uh, as S weights. And that's a very powerful thing. And many estimation procedures are built on this particular property where we try to estimate this kappa matrix, which encodes the sparse correlations. And particularly if kappa i, j equals zero, then there is no edge between two uh, nodes in the network. Now, if we rewrite this, uh, this expression uh, in, a, in a matrix way, uh, we can form this particular model for sigma, which gives us a psychometric model that we can estimate. So here we say that the variance coverage matrix equals uh, a diagonal scaling matrix, uh, multiplied on both sides a uh, inner power versus an identity matrix, 
minus this omega matrix, and that's a parse correlation matrix. And this model here allows me to translate from a, um, a network of parse correlations, this is zeros on the diagonal, and sparse correlations elsewhere, to an implied variance corpus matrix. And with that property, we can estimate this model in exactly the same way you would estimate a uh, structure equation model, for example. Okay, so let's take a look at an example of a uh, Gaussian graph model or parse correlation network. So here I have three variables with two parse correlations and a non-zero. This is minus 0 0.25 and this is 0 0.3. So those are here in this omega matrix. Minus 0.25 and 0 0.3. And that implies a set of correlations where the correlation between concentration and insomnia is not zero. So this correlation is now implied to be minus 0.08, but this correlation is explained by this interaction between concentration and fatigue and this interaction between insomnia and fatigue. Now, and then uh, we can scale this up to many more variables. So this is an example of a, uh, a particular Gaussian graphical model uh, where uh, we looked at relationships of this uh, PRS node here to other uh, uh, nodes in the network where all these edges are uh, weighted as parts correlation coefficients. Okay, that's it for this video on the Gaussian graphical model.